Hi everyone, I just want to make a little demo on how I'm going to offset, create a solid out of this poly surface. Uh, I want to thank Martin Curry for providing me this beautiful shipped hull that he surfaced in Rhino. And um, I want to cap it so that it becomes a, a, a solid. So different ways of doing a, 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 poly, a close poly surface, a solid out of a out of a bunch of surfaces like that. So let me show you one example that is the most popular. If I go under the fillet surface function and I expand the toolbar, I've got here the offset surface uh, icon. So I can click on offset surface. So it can be either surfaces or poly surfaces, by the way. And I'm just gonna right click. So you can see the arrows either pointing outwards or you can click on flip all in the options up there in the command line and it's gonna point inwards. So let's say, let's try inwards for, for example. So this one is in millimeters. I don't know what scale it is. Let me just check the distance quickly so that I can, so I go here, measure the distance from here to here roughly. So it's 104 millimeters. Okay, so it's a scale model. So I'm gonna select my poly surface, go to offset surface. So you can either have pointing uh, so doing the offset outside, like you can see with the arrows, or click on flip all or F on the keyboard, and you have it inside. So let's try with 1.25. And make sure that in the command line, solid equals yes. That means it's going to try and to create a closed poly surface for you, okay? So you can either, either offset as surfaces or poly surfaces, or you can either, uh, you, if you click on solid equals yes, it's going to offset and try to make it a solid automatically for you, okay? So it's gonna take a bit of time, so I'm just gonna to have to wait a little bit. There you have it. So it did a horrible job. It's an open poly surface. The thickness is way too big, so let me undo. Let's try again. So if I do a much smaller value, let's see. Instead of, okay, instead of inside, let's try it outside as well. And let's give a value because it was obviously way too big. Let's try 0.25 just for argument's sake. And click enter. So this time, yeah, it did a much better job with a smaller value, obviously. However, if I select my, my object, it says open poly surface. And you can see already a gap here, okay? So maybe you can resurface this area. Like you can see something wonky going on here. So it's not good here. It's not good. So you can either extract these surfaces and try to rework them if you want. That would be one way of doing it. And I can see also here something weird going on. So you see sometimes uh, with complex surfaces, it gives you some odd results. So I'm going to show you another approach maybe that could work. So for those who are advanced in surfacing, they can easily tackle these problems, you know, and resurface locally. Okay. I'm not going to do this because it's going to take too much time, but I want to show you another quick solution. So I'm just going to click undo and I'm just going to close off. So I'm just going to create a line here and there, a line here and there. Okay. So I'm going to try, uh, I guess, I don't know if it's fully flat. Let's see, is it perfectly flat? Maybe it is. So if it's perfectly flat, I can use this under the icon called surface from three and four corner points. I can use this one surface from planar curves. Select this edge, select that edge, select that curve. So it didn't work because maybe I'm missing an edge somewhere. Let me zoom in sometimes. It requires a lot of precision or maybe it's because it's not planar also. That could be the other reason why it didn't work. So instead of trying to close it off with this function, I can use the function sweep two rails. So I'm going to use this rail, that rail and that section and sweep it. So I'm going to leave it at position at A and B. I'm going to, okay, this one is pretty obvious that it's going to be either a sweep two rails or I can do a surface from planar curves because it's a very rectangular shape, so I'm pretty sure it's planar. And there you have it. And I can do a sweep to rail for the other part, for the bigger part of the deck. So, so you can see here, it seems that the edge is cut in two. So I might, before I sweep, I might want to try and merge my edges. So I go here, 
under the analyze direction so the arrow here okay and uh, I go and expand my toolbar here under show edges and I've got this icon here called merge edges so let's see if I can merge them no I can't okay so that means there's an endpoint here and there's an endpoint there so I'm just going to use the line tool snap to endpoint on my snapping toolbar find this endpoint find that endpoint and that's it so I'm just going to do a surface sweep to rails this edge that edge that edge and that edge position at a and b and I'll do the same here edge edge this edge and that edge sweep it there you go so now I'm going to try to join everything together so join this 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 and this sorry this enter so there you have it uh, I need to join this there you go so <clears throat> sorry so everything is joined together it joined it automatically so I know that it's a solid you can see it here two surfaces or poly surfaces joined into one closed poly surface or again if I go in my properties tab under object under type closed poly surface so that means it's ready for rapid prototyping obviously you don't want to rapid prototype it as it is because you need to hollow it out so I try to offset this poly surfaces using the icon here okay offset surface or poly surface <coughs> sorry it didn't work okay that's fine there's another function you can try it's shell okay I'm not holding my breath with the shell function but sometimes it can give good results I'm just gonna change the thickness instead of one let's say 0.25 enter and let's see what it does with these faces that I'm gonna try and remove like that and press enter sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work it depends on the complexity of the surface the more complex the surface becomes the less likely the shell function will work properly but sometimes it can yield some surprisingly pleasant surprises okay so let's see what it does with the shell function I just want you to know that it exists you just type in shell s h e l l and press enter and you can use this command okay do I use it often not really I don't use it often uh, and here's a classical result it says so it did shell but it yielded again some missing surfaces so you can try and fix it for yourself you know but I don't see really in this demonstration the benefit of using the shell function now I can see that my shell maybe is a bit too small also I could I should have done a maybe a 0.5 millimeter but anyways let's suppose that it doesn't work at all so I'm just going to click undo I'm going to show you another possibility so this one is the easiest and the most interesting in my opinion so check this out I'm going in the back view for example press F7 to remove the gear the grid so I'm going to select my object I'm going to activate my gumball I'm going to press alt to make a copy and press shift at the same time and I'm going to use either one of these handles the red one or the green one of my gumball okay and I'm just going to make a copy and a scale 3d of my object so I'm offsetting inside creating a new copy so I just did it did it as you can see here okay um, and I'm going to change colors actually so that we can see the difference so I'm switching back to perspective view I'm going to go into display color and I'm going to put it in yellow for example so that we can clearly see where the surfaces are conflicting so you can see here it doesn't work at all you see so I'm gonna have to tweak all this stuff so check this out I'm gonna choose the yellow solid I might so I'm tempted to move it upwards for sure like this so I want to make sure that you know it goes above the deck of the gray solid like that okay now I want to show you how easy it is with the UDT to uh, create a shell so I'm gonna press F7 to remove the grid and I'm good so I have got my object the yellow solid selected under the move tool if I expand my toolbar we've got here the cage edit function so I'm just gonna left click on this and I'm gonna select bounding box so coordinate system world okay that's fine I don't need to bother with that I just press enter or right click so now you've got the uh, cage points in the X Y and Z direction 4 by 4 by 4 
So these are the control points. So I know that in the X direction, I'm going to double up the amount. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to type in eight, enter. And I'm going to leave in Y and Z direction as four. The degrees, I don't bother. I'm just going to leave it at three. That's fine. And I just right click or press enter. Region of the cage edit. So you can see with the red box, that's my cage that is being uh, surrounding that is surrounding my yellow solid and I just don't do anything I just leave it as global so I just press either enter or right click and here you can see my different control points so now I can select these control points here I can select I press shift and I select these other rows of control points and with my gumball activated I can use the green hand handle and I can scale it non-uniformly so in one direction in the Y direction and I can offset like this. So maybe I've gone a bit too far. Let's say something like that. Okay. So now I need to go here. I can put myself in the ghost mode. And I can do the same here. Well, I've, been, I've gone a bit too fast. But let's say in perspective. So if I want to avoid to select my poly surfaces, I've got here a filter here at the bottom of my screen. If I click on filter, I can choose only control points. I'm going to uncheck everything else. So that means this filter will allow me to control, select only the control points. So I'm going to select these control points here and these two over there. I'm going to press shift and then my gumball, or actually I can do all like this. There you go. And then I'm going to use the green handle and I'm just going to scale them like this so that I bring this more inside. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to select all these control points here and I'm going to use the green handle of my gumball and just scale it more inside so that it doesn't cut into my gray solid. And by, by doing this operation, I am still keeping my yellow object as a solid. Whatever I'm doing right now, it's always remaining as a solid. So I can bring these control points higher up like this I can take these control points, the whole row here, maximize this, bring it up here so that it really clears properly my gray solid. These control points, I can select them and bring them more aft actually. And if I want more localized, I can take these two control points and pull them more like this. So it's always remaining a solid, my yellow object. Okay, that looks good. Looks good from the upper part, from the top view, I mean. It looks good. Uh, oh yeah, I can see that I still have some yellow that is coming out. So I'm just going to select these control points, all these control points. And again, I'm going to scale it more inside. There you go. That's what I want. So let's check everything. I don't see any yellow coming out of the gray solid. I'm going to press escape, escape twice or three times, and I'm going to select my cage and I can try and actually, okay. So you see when I try to try to, uh, so I just made a, uh, not a mistake, but I omit it in my selection filter. Make sure because I have only the control points that are selectable, make sure that you click disable on your selection filter. And now you can select your cage and press delete and you can select your solids, okay? So this, this is very important. Make sure that you disable your, your selection filter uh, in the meantime. All right, so now I've got this, the gray object, which is a closed poly surface, the yellow object, it's a closed poly surface. So now I'm gonna do a Boolean difference. So I go here, Boolean difference, this solid, enter, minus this solid, enter. And there you have it, it's done. I've got a closed poly surface, so I can export this as an STL and it's ready to be prototype, basically. So I can remove all my curves. Whoops, a bit too fast. There you go. And I've got a nice solid and ready for prototyping. Okay, so that's one quick tip I wanted to share with you. It's very practical. Use the UDT, okay? So basically the UDT, the cage edit, function is here. It's a very powerful tool. And also at the bottom of the screen, the filter object, you can select either just points, curves, or just surfaces or just poly surfaces. So it's a great filter for selection, but don't forget to disable it 
once you don't need it. Otherwise, you won't be able to select your object and you're going to think there's a bug or something like that. It happened many times to me. And then I figured out like uh, over time, yeah, don't forget to use the disable function to, uh, to disable the selection filter. Okay, so that's it for this little demo. Thank you.